Hello, everybody, and welcome to this month's critique. Let's get to it. All right, let's get going. Um, this is a, just a terrific painting. I love this painting. There's there's um, so much to like about it. Um, and number one is just you know the eye goes right here. It goes right to that main rock rock formation, which I just really like the the control that that creates. The, really, the only issue I have with this entire painting is the foreground is so bright, and there's so much color in it that um, it takes away from this main object back here. So, literally, the only thing I would do, I'll do it real quick, is just knock this back. This this entire uh, front cliff. Uh, image adjust. Watch what happens when we knock knock back some of this color here. Not much, just enough. Now look at that that hill back there. Now it's even brighter. So then I would take some of this bright red. That may be just a little bit too bright, but let's take just just for grounds. Let's take some of it and just add it right here. I think that's too much. Let's knock it back a little bit. Here we go. No, no, look what that does. So controlling our values, especially in the foreground, gets people into our painting, takes us right to our main interest. A little spot of color back there really helps that. This background back here is just, uh, it's just amazing. It's a beautiful piece. I love this painting. So I just think the foreground was just a little bit too bright, too much saturation in the color, um, and it was attracting too much attention. So we just all we did was knock it back. This is uh, another uh, painting that just needs a little help with value. The, the rendering is beautiful. Um, the only two there are only two issues with it that I see. One is this road is just like a straight shot. I mean, just boom. It's like an arrow, and it takes you. And where does it take you? It takes you right there. I mean, and is that really where you want the eye to go? It's right there. So when you put in a lead-in path like this, um, you really have to make sure that you're going to take the, the viewer where right where you want them to go. And if not, then just kind of knock it back a little bit so that it, it's there, but it's not there. Let me see what that does. It just, we have a lead-in path, which I think is great. The only other issue uh, with this particular painting is the warmth that all this area back here. I think it's beautifully rendered, but I think it's just a little bit warm. So let's just go back through here. And all we're going to do is change our color a little bit and change uh, maybe our value a little bit, but let's see what happens here let's go to color balance and we're going to add some purple in there and some blue in there maybe a little cyan no nah, i like that right there let's see what that does i mean that that alone adding that co the coolness back here just a few purples and reds back here in the back really separates the foreground to that distant area then maybe just soften some of these trees a little bit they're maybe just a little bit too hard around the edges but other than that I think this is a beautiful painting it's just um, need a little bit of coolness as you go back in this areas I mean, just remember that you know when you do a painting and you've got a foreground structure and then really a distant really distant ground i mean that this back cliff back here i mean it's it's back there i mean it's a couple miles from where we were standing when we were painting in that area back there and of course you don't know that scene in a photograph because it brings it all forward so even in a photograph you've got to even stress it even more so just remember as you go from here back this way you lose red and you lose yellow so this area right over here is catching a lot of light. So you're still going to see some reds and yellows in there. But as it turns 
this area back here as it goes this way into this area a lot of blues a lot of purples not so much red um, this was a really neat painting I, I like this a lot there's a, a lot of effort put into these trees a um, couple things that just to kind of just stick out is um, this right here this shape here and that shape there are almost identical so that's one of those things you want to avoid. You kind of have to look at it and go, hmm, I need to change one of those. Even if even if in the photograph or if you're out there painting, it's in real life, and they're absolutely the same shape, well, you got to change them yourself. The uh, two other things that we need to remember is hard edges. Oh, goodness, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Okay, hard edges back here. There. And then all along in here, those hard edges attract a lot of attention. Uh, they just do. So you want to make sure when, you, when you're when doing your painting that right here along this edge, just soften it up some. Just like that. And back here. Because that's not where you want the eye to go. You don't want the eye to go to the back. You want to stay up here in the front, especially when we got so much going on up here in the front. So now let's just talk about the trees. One is the shadow areas. These dark, these areas um, are just a little bit dense. And what I mean by dense is they're really, really dark. And um, things just aren't that dark um, in the landscape, especially in trees. Maybe in the trunks, especially when they get down toward the ground, you might see that kind of darkness. But in trees like this, they just aren't that dark. So what I'm going to do is take that darkness, and I'm just going to lighten it up some. So Just through here, and then through here. And especially when you start getting out up here on the top, there's there's the, the tree catches more light up here in the top than it does at the bottom. So your shadow areas in the top of your trees are way less dense, way less dark than they are at the bottom. As you get toward the ground, you start getting more you know darker shadows. But up here in the top of the trees, not so much. All right, so let's. Let's play with these trees a little bit. The other issue is right here along this edge, right here, right through here. These edges are really, really sharp. Right there, right there. All along this edge there. So we want to kind of go in and just kind of put some more branches out there. Let's just go ahead and change this. There you go. We're going to change that tree right there. <laughs> Quickly done. I just hope you get an idea. I mean, you know, obviously I'm painting in Photoshop with, in, in an airbrush instead of an oil brush. I really need to find a good Photoshop oil brush to use. I'll, I'll do that between now and the time we do our next one. But look, look what's happening to this tree now. It's really starting to take on some life. And it's important that as you go, just go outside, look at some trees, look at the edges of these trees. And you're going to find that they aren't sharp. Uh, the sunlight starts coming through them. The other distance objects start coming through them. So you just... Get, let me see if I can do this. Here we go. This tree's taking on some life. And then these sky holes. These, these little areas where the sky comes through they are very important to making a tree look believable so don't discount the use of sky holes in your trees they are very very important how you use them where you place them uh, it's all very important 
But look how these trees now are starting to take on some life. So again, and then down here, you know, the, this shadow area, again, is just, uh, it's really, really dense, meaning it's too dark. Uh, so whatever you're doing in your shadow areas, start lightening those up a little bit because these are just a little bit too dark. Okay. Other than that, this is a terrific painting. Let's go to this one. Okay, so this one here uh, is really interesting. Um, I love the application of the paint and the design, everything like that. The only major issue is this whole area over here on the right is in shadow. And yet it's lit up like it's um, a Roman candle, like it's, it's like it's out there in the sun. So let's just see what happens when we take it back. So I'm going to take it and adjust the levels on it. So we're just going to take it back this way. And then we're going to take the saturation down, which means in oil terms, that just means we're going to mute it back a little bit. So what we, what we would be doing is adding greens and blues to our red to get it to knock back. And then we go paint this sky in just to straighten this out. get this purple in here you, you gotta love the thick paint I mean I'm a big fan of thick paint I'm a big fan of expressive painting techniques and I think this is just really expressive I, I really like it but even with that uh, things in nature do certain things and so we want to if this is supposed to be in shadow then it needs to be painted like it's in a shadow so even by doing that, now look what happened. That what what that hat. <laughs> sorry. So what happened is, look how much without doing anything to this back cliff. Look how much brighter it looks compared to what was going on here in the front. And look at where the light is really hitting this front structure up here, here and here. Just look how much better this all looks just by desaturating all that brightness and knocking that hill back. Okay, other than that, no other changes. So this is an interesting painting. Uh, it, it's interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, the main one being, um, let's start with these three trees. Three, our three main big objects here. They are almost identical in size. They are almost identical in shape. So that's a situation where you got to come in and possibly change things up, even though that's what's in the photograph you're painting from or from the landscape you're painting. So let's just take this particular tree and let's just make it bigger. And we're going to put it right there. <laughs> it's just just changing it just like that all right so let me go soften it oh oops, sorry let me go back that's too much too much uh smudging let me knock my smudging tool back and do this to it all right let me just uh correct a few things here so we get back to normal okay so that's number one so now look what we have and we've got three trees but three different sizes and it just creates a lot more visual uh, more visually interesting painting now I, I think this particular painting works best if you think of it in terms of an abstraction instead of a true landscape it, it seems to be a scene that's been turned into an abstract painting I say that for a couple reasons one is, and the main reason here is, I can't tell from either the trees or the shadows or anything that's going on where the light is coming from. Part of me thinks that this is a sunset. 
because of this the way this is painted back here but if it's a sunset then these trees would be rimlet meaning just the rims out here the rest of the tree would be dark that's what rim lighting is it would be rimlet up around and then most of the tree would be dark uh oh lost my stuff hold on okay <laughs> let's get rid of this so that's one thing is is it a sunset i don't know because the reason i don't know is you got this really bright light coming through here this way through here so if that's the case then these trees would be lit all along this side of them. But they don't seem to be lit that way. The other issue is, if you take this green right here, which is in our foreground, and you go way back here, there's that green again right there. And what happens as we go back from front to back, we lose value and we lose intensity and we start losing our greens a little bit. So that would be a little bit bluer back here. So that's another, just another consideration. But the main thing is the way you tell where sunlight is coming from is by looking at shadows. And there are no distinct shadows in the painting to tell me where the sun is coming from, where the light's coming from. So let's go to this tree right here. There's a shadow on this side of that tree and a shadow on that side of the tree. This tree we obscured, so we can't tell. And this tree back here has got shadow on both sides. So typically, if a shadow is in that kind of shape underneath a tree, that means the light is coming from above. So not to you know labor the point with this particular painting where the sun where the light's coming from is it coming from my left is it coming from a sunset way off in the distance is it coming from above the way this is rendered I can't tell um, and if I'm confused about that that means the viewer would be confused but that being said if you go back and you go back to our original thought on this painting if this is an abstract painting then it works really well <laughs> okay you put this painting with all this color into a, a beautiful frame and it's a i guarantee you it's a beautiful painting that will knock your socks off i just i just know that that's what would happen but if we're talking about landscape painting and trying to keep to the rules of a landscape painting this painting does not follow those rules so the artist is asking you to make a leap basically um into what they're painting what they're showing you all right and and then not to really labor things but so we have these fence posts there's one there one there one there then there's a gap there's one there one there one there one there i'm not real sure what the fence posts are supposed to be doing or if they're adding anything to the painting now if we put a fence post here and then one right over here now what we have is a gate that visually takes us from the foreground that way because all of this over here acts as a big block visual block to you if that makes any sense <laughs> uh, I'm just so anyway to end it um, visually this I think this painting is beautiful but it does not follow the rules that we would normally follow in doing a landscape painting the artist has taken it and pushed it pushed it to a whole new level uh, and I believe that that whole new level works it just doesn't work with the typical rules that we see in a landscape painting if that makes any sense <laughs> so I'm sorry I've gone off way on a tangent I apologize so that's it we're done have a good day and uh, we'll see you next month send us uh, some more work bye